Very few films leave you heartbroken, even fewer that turn it all around in the end to a conclusion that I actually doubt if it's true. It's like coming across a long lost restaurant and you'd find it shut down the next day. Either rotten luck or the story of a lifetime. Robot Dreams touches on the desire for the kind of love that crosses the boundaries of the conditional, while at the same time reminding us of loss that can transform our lives for the better. Directed by Pablo Baga, who, despite his small number of films, is making a fascinating name for himself as a thinker and unconventional. Not everything has to be the same, he says. Not every song needs a chorus, which is definitely a bad analogy, but you get it, right? Robot Dreams plays on our imagination. By making it both silent and surreal in places, the colors are on full contrast, the artwork refreshing, and the story slowly pulling you in. Because of all this, I must say, whether it is a good or a bad ending rests entirely on the viewer's interpretation. Robot Dreams centers on a dog, literally referred to as dog. After a long day at work, he comes back home to a lonely life surrounded by horny neighbors. Back to the monotony that is most people's personal existence. Work, food, entertainment, shower, sleep, and the cycle repeats. Some of us have upgraded to doing most of these things at the same time. Eat, shower, and entertainment all in one. I am a culprit, yes, and it is weird. <laughs> An interesting aspect about this story is the fact that the main character is a dog, an animal that is literally incapable of being sad for too long, and yet he is. While surrounded by a world that seems to be doing just fine, you get the feeling that he is out of place. It rings in our ears, the monotony of it all. An unhappy dog in a world in motion? Pairing this with our own existential crises of loneliness makes for a rather compelling movie. We all see ourselves in this character. It's a world like ours. Advertisements promising the perfect life that may not work out. And in the fringes we spot people happier, more fulfilled than us. It is here, while desperate to change his life, the dog buys a robot. The robot brings in a new dynamic. Once the machine is turned on, dog and robot bond in the cutest montages known to man. I was smiling the whole time, ear to ear, until my roommate asked if I was watching a crazy dating series, wishing desperately that something goes hilariously and horribly wrong. Say no more. The robot opens his eyes to an unfamiliar world that he doesn't fully understand but immediately loves. Even the rule-breaking part of it. It's like a child coming into the world, eating grass and mud while desperate to touch the fire. He brings back the dog's own love for freedom and seeing things in a completely different way. Old passions come back and the world seems to get brighter. The music is very clever. It dulls, almost tunes out and then lifts with some popular music that is fit for the era in the film. Pairing a robot and a dog is a piece of genius and it gave us the most beautiful yet unusual message. We often don't associate robots with good things like we do dogs, or at least we don't have enough information to go off except an abundance of dystopian movies that freak us out. With all these movies, all I know is I could fall in love with one, right before the Terminator comes back, another saves the world, and we leave Wally behind. So very mixed messages, but here the robot represents both the unconditional love and the innocence of life. Two things that we all desperately need, turning into the world from the hellscape it once was to a world full of joys. Then the same old world comes back into play. Dynamic, yes, moving, yes, but relentlessly hopeless in the end. The symbolic representation of childhood through the eyes of a robot is also brought out here in a rather sad way. Dog decides to go on the biggest trip yet, to the beach, with none of them referring back to the manual. As expected, the robot's body rusts and he breaks down. We see Dog try everything he can to free robot, but nothing works. A late night heist doesn't work. Pleading for help doesn't work. Even the court system doesn't help him much. Dog leaves him, hoping to come back next year. And Robot, the one creature accustomed to seeing things with such wonder, is broken down into the saddest foes of the world. Left trapped, unable to explore the world because of his broken body, exposing the robot to the worst kind of people, making him lose his love and trust. I know you can remember, maybe too vividly, the day when childhood wonder left your eyes and all you saw was the uphill battle that is life. You need a job, you need money, you need a place to stay, and don't forget, you need friends. We are starting to forget that we need friends. In a weird twist of symbols, we become robots, even as young as children. But it doesn't mean we're incapable of finding joy in our lives. What could the world be? We're free to dream, right? Robot, despite being trapped, still longs for something. 
to be able to stand up for one, to be reunited with his friend, and to enjoy the world, or at the very least to be rescued. This leads to a series of surreal dreams and unique events that make you wonder what is real and what isn't. His dreams merge with the movie until the loneliness seeps right through the screen, and from this point on the film completely changes in tone. I find the shots very provocative in how much they want to convey or how much we are allowed to interpret. The film takes us painfully through the stages of grief towards acceptance. First, we often deny when faced with the shock of what is happening. Then we are overwhelmed with guilt, wishing we could have done things differently. We bargain and boil up in anger while we compartmentalize our worst fears and create false scenarios in our head to soothe ourselves. I'm often studying new workout routines by this time, just to get my mind off it all. But then it hits like a pound of bricks that you've lost something or faced something horrible or yet to face it even. And the depression beats you down. The desire to sleep through the pages becomes all too real to walk away from your own story. The desire to not exist. Sleep is good, death is better. Yet surely, never to have been born is best. The robot has a chance encounter with someone who takes him from what is literally death's door, being in a junkyard. The man builds up the robot again in a new way that fits the new life he's going to lead, a new way to appreciate life, while Dog finds a new robotic friend. Kind of like hitting rock bottom and getting up better and different from who you used to be. We've all had the stories of people who fall down drunk on the streets, yet three years later are sober, professionally dressed, and even quoting Shakespeare. We can go farther with a lot of help, but even without it, I find that anyone is capable of that transformation. They have a chance encounter that drifts into another dream sequence, only to be followed by another chance encounter. Do you remember? Forgetting their history, the two dance together one last time and head off into different, wiser, and better lives. And if you leave it that, wow, a real roller coaster of a movie with highs, lows, and happy ending. And it is here that two different people may see the movie in two different ways, different endings. At least I did. I'm a glass half full kind of person, but sooner or later someone has to take a sip. Depending on how you view humanity, dreams, and the world at large, you could have a different idea of how it all ends. Is this a happy or a sad ending? Or is it all simply a part of one's imagination? First time I watched the movie, I thought, yeah, happy ending. Then there is a part of me that felt maybe, maybe it was all in the robot's mind. Maybe the person who came to help didn't actually come. Maybe the chance encounter didn't even happen. Maybe a snowman playing bowling ball with Doug is proof that the latter half of the film is not even real. First scene you think back to, that of the sad robot surrounded by laughing children. It doesn't add up. You have a sinking feeling that things went back to the way they once were. Dog never got over his loneliness and Robot never got off that beach. Sad as it is, and possibly true depending on your interpretation, you sink into a kind of loneliness of your own. And you go back and listen to the music, smiling ear to ear until your roommate says, okay, who slapped who in that reality series you're definitely watching there? And even though you can't help but imagine the worst, the best is still a possibility. That, with the right chance, hope, and change, luck can shift and things get better. But then again, it depends on how you see it. Robot Dreams is a fascinating bit of film that I had to tackle. There is so much nuance that could make for even more discovery if people flip gently through the scenes. I no longer think it's a bleak story with a sad ending. It was driving me a bit crazy thinking I was such a pessimist, but things do get better. Tell me what you think though, even though you have not watched the film, because it's a bit obscure. But tell me what you think and if you interpret it differently. Don't forget to subscribe, which I will continue asking on every video until I get to a million subscribers. So buckle in. <laughs> Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.